So welcome back. Um, I want to briefly do a recap on the previous modules and give an introduction to this one. Uh, we are now at the fifth module of the course, Knowledge and Data, and this is also going to be the last one. So now we hope that everything comes together so that uh, in the next uh, remaining three weeks you can start working on a project and apply all the things that you've learned in the past four weeks now and in the past in the first four weeks of five weeks of the course. So here's the big picture, the recap of the modules one to four. We have uh, seen languages and data models for data and knowledge sharing on the web, in particular the, the emphasis is also on the web as one of the most uh, important knowledge sharing platforms uh, of, of our times. And um, particularly the last week and the last the week before it looked into knowledge representation languages for expressing uh, data schemas and expressive ontologies. Uh, and for this, we have uh, looked at the knowledge representation format of a knowledge graph and uh, linked data, RDF, RDFS, and OWL. So here is the more, more uh, graphical picture of what we have done. We have really looked at the web platform and how to use URIs and HTTP uh, code to get, um, um, get information from sources on the web and to publish information on the web. We have looked at knowledge representation structures uh, that are useful for this, uh, namely the graph model and the RDF uh, data model. And we have looked at different syntaxes for doing this, namely turtle, RDFA, uh, JSON, and so forth. Plus, at the end, looked at semantics that we can apply on those data items. Uh, and for this, we've looked at the languages OWL, RDFS, and I will say a little bit about SCORS later. Uh, there's also the, opportunity, the, the, the possibility of querying the data, and for this uh, we have uh, looked at the Sparkle language. So we have, if you look at the entire picture of data publishing and accessing uh, on the web, we have uh, accessed quite a lot of the, the, the pyramid or the, the, the semantic web stack, as it is called. Uh, and there is, is much more, but uh, for, for what we want to do in this course, this is the most important thing, the web as a platform for publishing and accessing data, some knowledge representation structure for publishing uh, knowledge graphs, different syntaxes for this, the, the opportunity of building queries, uh, and then now at the end it's application building that is on top of all these different layers of technology. So we have looked at these questions in the past what should information look like if you want to use it the web to share information between machines uh, the answer was uh, use knowledge graphs and rdf uh, how can we use that information to answer questions the answer was uh, take sparkle for example as a query language uh, how do we prevent miscommunication amongst different web-based information sources? And the answer is semantics. So if you do uh, RDFS uh, uh, schemas, then you, you, you can be sure that the properties that you use have certain properties. And uh, if you uh, use OWL, you can even be far more expressive on your constraint on the vocabulary that you use. And now the final thing that we're going to address in these, uh, this remaining module is how to connect and integrate different information sources. So that at the end, the only thing that remains is how can we build applications that use this information on these different levels that we've been discussing. Before doing that, uh, class is going to uh, talk a little bit more about ontology engineering, the methodology behind how to build um, ontology, proper ontologies, because this, this is also important when you want to do uh, more expressive language, more expressive statements, and when you want to uh, integrate more data from complex sources. Mm -hmm.